Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, let us reflect on the gospel according to Luke chapter 9, verses 18 to 22. Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ. Once when Jesus was praying alone with only, his, with only the disciples near him, he asked them, Who do the crowd say that I am? They answered, John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, that one of the ancient prophets has risen. He said to them, but what do you say that I am? Peter answered, the Messiah of God. He sternly ordered and commanded them not to tell anyone, saying, the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Thank Praise you, to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, so we, we see today about uh, how Jesus questions them uh, to understand what is their perception, who do they think he is. And this has, this has context to the earlier scripture in Luke chapter 9, wherein as Jesus sent uh, the 12 out and uh, they came, uh, they went about healing the sea, casting out demons. This news reached the ruler of, of that time, that is Herod. And when he heard it, he was perplexed. He, he The word of God tells us in Luke 9, 7, because uh, obviously whatever was happening in, in his jurisdiction, the news would definitely be going to the ruler. And uh, when uh, when he gets the news, um, he he is taken aback by what is happening. And then he is uh, said to be, some say that he is John probably who is raised from the dead because John was beheaded at the instruction of um, Herod, John the Baptist, he, something that he is Elijah or some prophet. So they are, they are all a little confused. And... Uh, but Herod says, John, I beheaded. So who is this about whom I hear such things? So he is curious to know. He he tries to even see him. And later we have the Lord uh, feeding the 5,000 with the five loaves and two fish. And uh, finally, when when they are together and uh, they, are, they are having uh, their alone time with, uh, with Jesus and Jesus was praying, he questions his disciples. Now, these are the people who are following him. And he asked them because he wanted to understand their perspective of what others are thinking about him. So he, he, he just asked them, who do the crowd say I am? And the response that Jesus gets is John the Baptist, but others Elijah and some others, some ancient prophet. But to the Lord, what others think about him at this point in time did not really matter. For him, what mattered most what was who his disciple was saying he was. So that is why he puts these questions to his disciples. It was not targeted at any single individual, but his disciples. And it is Peter who responds, the Messiah of God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, we see that uh, when we look at Messiah, we look at the definition. Uh, this term Messiah refers to a savior or a liberator of a group of people. Now, the, the word comes from the Hebrew word ma Messiah, which translates to the anointed one. And uh, when Peter says this, he is saying it because definitely the, the, the Lord says, this is not revealed to you by, by flesh or blood, but it is revealed to you 
by my father in heaven. Now, why would the father have chosen to reveal to Peter? It's, it's worth considering this because we understand that Peter was one of the first ones who were called by Jesus. He had been closely associated with Jesus. He was in the inner circle of the Lord, accompanying him, journeying with him, learning from him, getting to know who Jesus is as he was preaching about the kingdom of heaven. Peter was the one who had witnessed the miracles. He, has, he was also there to, to see the sick being healed, demons being cast out, the, uh, the uh, dead being raised. And which shows us that Peter knew Jesus. And he knew Jesus because he was journeying with the Lord. He had developed a personal relationship with Jesus. And that is how the father had chosen him to reveal that he is the Messiah, the son of God. My dear brothers and sisters, Peter was living at a time when Jesus was here in the flesh, in the physical. But for you and me, the same word that became flesh is available for us. And when we journey with the Lord, through our fellowship, through our relationship with the word of God, what is happening is the word of God is Jesus. And when we uh, reflect, when we meditate, we read, we speak the word of God day and night, what is happening is we are growing in our relationship with Jesus. And when we are growing in a relationship with Jesus, the Father reveals to those in a relationship with Jesus what he needs to reveal to us. He, he, the, the Father is the one who is answering our prayers. These prayers that are answered are because we are to the Father now just as Jesus is. When we grow in our uh, intimate relationship with God, just as when Jesus opened his mouth, there would be signs, there would be wonders, there were miracles. Why? Because whatever was required, it was given to Jesus because he trusted, he saw his father, he, he communicated with his father. For you and for me as children of God, we too are called to grow in our relationship with God. Jesus was not so bothered about what others had to say about him. But he was concerned about what his own disciples said about him. Are we the disciples of Jesus? Are we the ones who are seeking him? For when we seek him day and night, when we are spending time with him, we are ourselves growing in such a close relationship that whatever needs to be revealed is revealed to us by the Father. Because now we are the ones who are to inherit the kingdom of God as, because we become the heirs of the kingdom of God in Christ Jesus. Peter made a beautiful declaration. If that question is asked to each one of us or any of us today, do we have the same answer? Is Jesus our Savior? Or are we looking at him just to be our provider? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let us close with the thanksgiving prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our loving Father, we thank you, we praise you, we give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for what you revealed and made known through Peter. 
surely it was not revealed to him by flesh and blood but by you and that was revealed because peter chose to journey and had developed a relationship with your beloved son lord each one of us who have come to know and make jesus the lord of our lives may we always know and remember that jesus is the messiah he is our savior he is the one in whom we have salvation the forgiveness of our sins and life everlasting lord jesus that we are blessed in knowing this and empowered by the holy spirit help us just as peter did being anointed by the holy spirit at pentecost by that empowerment went about preaching the gospel to the ends of the world may to learn from peter and work for this gospel to be preached the ends of the world abba father we make this prayer in jesus's mighty name amen amen amen, amen. 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 thank you jesus amen. please god Glory be to the Father and to the Father, Son, the Son and to the, the Holy Spirit. Amen. As it was in the, As beginning. Was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Now and ever shall be. Amen. Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for joining today. Uh, we will meet again on Monday. I request you to share these teachings as they are available, so that we take the message of the gospel of Christ to the ends of the world, as we are commanded to. Thank you, Jesus. Thank uh, you, any Jesus. of you who would like me to add you to the group uh, where I circulate the reminders for the intercession and the recorded session, you can just message me and uh, I will add you to the group. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sister. Jesus. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister.